Hello, Omega Emperor here. So, a lot of things has been happening in the Pokemon fan base. Ash Ketchum has become the world's strongest Pokemon trainer, and now he is not going to appear in Scarlet and Violet. It's going to be a. People are saying it's a. Probably the daughter of Ash, but. Yeah, we just might see what it might be, but a lot has been happening. And. As I promise, I'm bringing in part three of my Pokemon anime journey. This is about Omega visiting the Orange Islands. Now, of course, he is not going to go and visiting all the unnamed islands. He's only going to the ones that have either the gyms or any places that where he can just rest his Pokemon. And don't worry, I made sure Omega doesn't interfere with Ash's journey too much. So, yeah, without further ado, let's begin the story. After battling in the Pokemon League tournament, Omega, along with Ash and his friends, returned back to Palatine for a hero's welcome. However, the hero's welcome was interrupted by Team Rocket, who was trying to attempt to steal Ash's Pikachu. But thanks to Omega's Charizard, he was able to get back Pikachu and send Team Rocket blasting off. After Team Rocket attempted to steal Ash's Pikachu, Professor Oak made a quest to Ash, Brock, and Misty to go on another journey to bring him a mysterious looking Pokeball for him. Professor Oak also asked Omega to go with them, but Omega decides to rest up and catch up with his family. Omega part ways with Ash, Brock, and Misty and head home, and told his family about his adventures. His family told him now that he's the champion of the Kansas region, what is he going to do next? Omega didn't know where to go next, so his family recommended to go and challenge him to the Orange Iron League and battle against the Orange Crew. Omega first wasn't going to go because Professor Oak asked him for a mysterious Pokeball for him, but when his family told him about the Orange League, he wanted to go over there and show them what the Kanto champion can do. So next morning, his family got him a map to the Orange Island and drew the locations of the Orange Crew. Before going, Omega picked his team ready for their journey ahead. His team is presides of Charizard, Gyarados, Seedra, Neoking, Vitrubel, and Hitmonchan. Omega then rides his Charizard to Vermilion City and gets them SSN to Mackin Island. Once he arrived on Mackin Island, he registrates the Mackin Island Pokemon Center to register for the Orange Island Crew Challenge. He then got directions to the first gym on Mackin Island, where he battles against the first gym leader on the Orange Island, Cassie. Now, unlike the previous gyms, instead of the challenges, there are testers of loyalty between Pokemon and trainer. For Cassie, trainers are required to participate into an accuracy test and a race against the gym leader. Just like in the anime, the first challenge is both sides have to kit the can using a water type Pokemon. Both of them called out their Seedra, however both Seedras had an equal position of hitting the cans, and the results was a tie. So they both went outside to do the second challenge, the Pokemon Wave Ride. Cassie called out her Blastoise, and Omega called out his Gyarados. They both must start at the end of the beach and then swim around the flag, and then back at the beach. However, Omega's Gyarados was much faster than Cassie's Blastoise, winning Omega the race and receiving the Caller Eye Badge. Now that Omega had the Caller Eye Badge, he goes on another ship to set sail to Tangelo Island. Now this is where he meets up with Ash, Misty, as well as his new companion, Tracy. While Omega catch up with Ash, Misty and Tracy, Ash tells Omega that he's also doing the Orange Island Challenge. Omega then told Ash that he already completed one of the Orange Island Challenges and received the core eye badge. However, before Omega leaves, Ash challenges Omega to a one-on-one -on -one Pokemon battle. Of course, Ash chooses Pikachu while Omega battles with his Nidoking. But unfortunately, Ash's Pikachu lost to Omega's Nidoking. When the battle was over, Omega told Ash that he won with his strength, but is also with his type advantage. Ash still upset with the loss, since the next time they'll meet, he will win. Omega walks away with a thumbs up saying that he'll be waiting. Omega then rides his Gyarados from Tangalove Island to Dovita Island, where he meets and challenges the next Orange crew member, Rudy. But before taking him on, Omega must do another accuracy test on a boat. Before Omega accepts, he decides to switch out his Pokemon. He flicked out his Pokedex and switched out Seedra for his Jolteon. Omega then uses his Victory Bell, Charizard, and Jolteon to hit the targets, winning the accuracy test. Finally, it's the battle. 
However, Omega can only use three Pokemon, and Rudy's gonna use the same type of Pokemon that he's gonna use. Omega asked what kind of Pokemon Rudy has, and Ruby said that he has got Electabuzz, Executor, Starmie, Ninetales, Bernat, Pidgeot, Rhydon, Hitmonchan, Golem, and Alakazam. When Omega heard that he's got his own Rhydon, he decided to pull out his Pokedex and switch out his Needle King for his Rhydon. Then Omega told Ruby that he'll use a Fire, Electric, and a Ground-type Pokemon. The next morning, both trainers went out to the battlefield ready for the fight. The first battle is a Fire-type. Omega got out his Charizard, and Rudy caught out his Ninetales. So far, Omega has the advantage with Charizard being a Flying-type as well. After landing a few Wing Attacks and Flash Attacks, Rudy's Ninetales was unable to battle. Omega called back his Charizard ready for the Electric-type battle. He called out his Jolteon, and Ruby called out his Electabuzz. But once again, Omega tells Jolteon to use Swift as well as a Quick Attack, since Electabuzz has the ability to absorb electric attacks. With Jolteon's quick speed and its powerful Swift and Quick Attacks, Omega's Jolteon was able to defeat Rudy's Electabuzz. With two wins, Omega won the battle, but then Omega asked Rudy to challenge against his Rhydon with his own. Rudy was confused and asked why. Omega then tells Rudy that his Rhydon likes to battle against other trainers' Rhydons. Rudy understands and accepts this challenge. Rudy then called out his Rhydon, and Omega called out his Rhydon. When the battle begins, both Rhydons tussle it out. Until, but with Omega's Rhydon battling against so many Rhydons, as well as gym battles, was able to defeat Rudy's Rhydon. With the battle over with, Omega received the Spike Shell Badge. Omega then call out Gyarados and rise to Mandarin Island. Whilst chilling on the island, Omega battled against the Mandarin Island trainers. His team was finished and rested up. Omega called out his Gyarados and rode past Moko Island and arrived at Moro Island. While resting on Moro Island's Pokemon Center, Omega decided to switch out his Gyarados for Lapras. When morning came, Omega called out his Lapras and rode his Pokemon all the way to Naval Island. When Omega arrived at the Naval Island gym, a man named Dene, who is also a trainer, says that the only way that the gym leader can accept your challenge is by climbing up the mountain, without the aid of your Pokemon. Omega had difficulty climbing up the mountain, but he managed to reach to the top. Danny then told Omega the truth that he is the gym leader on Naval Island, and he went and he made that challenge of climbing up the mountain only for the strongest trainers. The first challenge was to freeze the glacier quickly. Omega caught out his Lapras, or Danny caught out his Nidoqueen. Both used their Ice Beam attacks to freeze the glacier, but unfortunately, Danny's Neoqueen won over Omega's Lapras. The next challenge was to create a frozen jet glacier by using three Pokemon. Danny called out his Neoqueen, Machamp, and Cypher. For Omega, he called out his Drivehorn, Charizard, and Hitmonchan. Thanks to Hitmonchan's Mock Punch attack, along with Charizard's Flamethrower and Rhyhorn's Bond Drill, they made the frozen jet glacier first. The last challenge was to race down the hill against Danny along with Geo. The last challenge was to race down against Danny along with his Geodude, Cypher, and Electrode on the frozen glacier jet. Omega pulled out his Pokedex and switched out his team again. This time, he switched out Rhyhorn for Gengar. And he picked Gengar, Hitmonchan, and Victory Bell. With that, both teams raced down the hill. Even though Omega never rode a frozen glacier jet, he was able to go neck and neck against Danny. And with that, Omega won the race and won the Sea Ruby Badge. With the obtaining of the Sea Ruby Badge, Omega rode his Lapras from Naval Island to Kumqua Island. And once Omega arrived and get directions for the next gym from a few trainers, he arrived at a hotel. But then he was surprised about the hotel being the gym. And after waiting just for like 5 minutes, Omega then met with the fourth and final of the Orange Crew, Lunala. But before battling her, Omega decides to heal up a Pokemon at the nearest Pokemon Center. Once, Omega Pokemon, once Omega's Pokemon were healed, he was ready to face Nulala. And for her test, he must defeat her in a double battle against her Alakazam and Marowak. Omega called out Gengar against Alakazam, and even though with the type advantage against Marowak, Omega decided to call out his Charizard. Nulala was surprised about Omega choosing a Charizard against her Marowak. But Omega told Nulala that Omega's Charizard is the strongest one in his team. And with his words right, both Gengar and Charizard were able to defeat Marowak and Alakazam. With that, 
Omega received the last gym badge, the J-Star badge. Nulala then let Omega stay in the hotel to the next island. He even called his family to let them know that he won all four badges and he's about to go and challenge the Orange Island Champion. The next morning, Nulala wished Omega good luck against the Orange Island Champion. Omega called his Lapras and rode his Lapras all the way to Pomelo Island. Once Omega arrived, he was registered ready for tomorrow's challenge. He was even got directions and shown to the Pomelo Stadium, as well as the Palace of Victory, but most people call it the Orange League Hall of Fame. Once he arrived at the Pokemon Center on Pomelo Island, he decides to switch out his team for tomorrow's battle, and the team he'll be using is the one that he used in the Kanto region. Charizard, Aerodactyl, Gengar, Gyarados, Victory Bell, and Jolteon. He even got his Pokemon checked up at the Pokemon Center, ready for tomorrow's battle. Morning came and Omega arrived at Pumlo Stadium, ready for the fight. Of course, the champion has showed himself, and it's none other than Drake. When Omega met Drake, they both did a traditional Pokemon handshake, and the rules are simple. The battle is a 6 on 6 Pokemon battle, and when three of and when three Pokemon are unable to battle, the field will be changed. The first field is a full rock field, and without further ado, the battle begins. And just like in the original anime, Drake starts with Ditto. Omega then starts with Jolteon. But of course, Ditto transforms into Jolteon, as well as having the same moves as Omega's Jolteon. However, Omega knows not to use electric type moves, instead, he told his Jolteon just to use swift and quick attacks. With his previous idea, he won a battle against Drake Ditto. However, Jolteon was hurt against Ditto's Swift and Quick Attacks. Drake then called back his Ditto and called out his Onyx. Omega then called back his Jolteon and called out his Victory Bell. With Ditto Rail's tag advantage, Omega was able to win against Drake's Onyx. Drake then called back his Onyx and called out his Venusaur. But this time, Omega decided to keep out his Victory Bell out. However, Drake Venusaur was so powerful that Omega's Victory Bell couldn't be able to beat it. Omega's Victory Bell then lost to Drake's Venusaur. Omega then called back his Victory Bell and called out his Gengar. Even though Omega's Gengar and Drake's Venusaur were equal in power, Omega's Gengar was able to beat Drake's Venusaur. With three Pokemon down, both trains take a timeout for the next field change. And the next change was a rock field. But the battle begins again with Drake calling out his own Gengar. Omega then decides to shock Drake as well as everyone in the crowd with watching them by calling out his Aerodactyl. However, however, Drake's Gengar was super powerful and it overpowered Omega's Aerodactyl. And he ended with a Shadow Punch. With Drake still having 3 Pokemon and Omega having 4, Omega decided to call out his Gyarados. It was a difficult battle, however, Drake's Gengar and Omega's Gyarados were both not out. Both trainers call back their Pokemon, with Drake calling out his fifth Pokemon, Electabuzz, while Omega called back out his Gengar. However, with a couple of Thunder Punches, Omega's Gengar was unable to battle. Omega wanted to save his Charizard for last, called out his Jolteon, with Omega telling him to use Swift and Quick Attacks, was able to beat Drake's Electabuzz. But then, Jolteon fainted and leaving them both with one Pokemon each. Omega then yelled out his final Pokemon, Charizard. As for Drake, he as well yelled out his final Pokemon, Dragonite. Of course, Omega faced a Dragonite before, however, Drake's Dragonite was more trained, but so was Omega's Charizard. At first, Charizard was able to defeat Dragonite, even though he managed to hold against Dragonite's Ice Beam and Thunder Attack. However, Drake orders Dragonite to use Dragon Rage, and it able to hit him directly at Omega's Charizard. However, with one hit of Dragonite's Dragon Rage, was able to knock down Omega's Charizard. But luckily, Omega's Charizard would stand the attack. Omega then yelled out his Charizard how much he meant to him, and yet he can do it. With Omega's words of confidant, activated Charizard's Blaze ability. Now that Charizard's fire attacks are more powerful, was able to defeat Dragonite's Dragon Rage. Omega then yelled out his Charizard to use Fire Blast. As for Drake, he yelled out his Dragonite to use Hyper Beam. The Hyper Beam and the Fire Blast clash. Omega then yelled out his Charizard to use Flame Flower on the Fire Blast. Charging up the Fire Blast was able to defeat Drake's Dragonite. With that, Drake's Dragonite was ending with the battle, making Omega the winner. Omega then received the winning trophy from Drake. Drake then said it was on a battle against the Kanto's champion. 
Omega and his team then took a picture and then the picture was set in the Hall of Fame. Next morning, Omega then took a ship from Pomelo Island back to Kanto. When he got back to Palatown, he told his family that he won the Orange League. Then he sat down with his Pokemon that he captured, thinking what to do next. Omega then remembered there's another region in the Kantos known as the Johto region. Omega then looked up the family's computer and found that there is a Johto League coming soon. He told his family that he would like to go and enter the Johto region. After his family said yes, Omega went back to Oak's Lake and told him that he would be going to the Johto region. Oak was happy to know that Omega was going to the Johto region and he gave him a new Pokedex that will help him to know the Pokemon in the Johto region. But with that, Omega sets to the Johto region with his Pokemon. Well, my trainer is done with the Orange Island now. Next my trainer is on to the Johto journey. Of course my trainer is going to be getting new Pokemon, battling against trainers, and going against the gym leaders. Hope you will enjoy my trainer's journey in the Orange Islands, and I'm looking forward to my trainer's journey into the Johto region. And if you like this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. This is Omega Emperor, stay awesome.